For years, Dillian White has been disrespected, underrated, and falsely accused. Hey guys, this is Boxing's Objective Observer and welcome back to Ringside Stories, offering you the story so far, the villain's version. Unlike his fellow Brit, Anthony Joshua, Dillian White has not held back on his words for former WBC heavyweight champion Deontay Wilder. So I just love him because he got, he got beat up so bad. <laughs> However, for all the banter he has for the Bronze Bomber, White spoke plenty of facts. He talked so much crap, he said he wants to kill someone. He said he's gonna kill me and I said I'm gonna kill him. So may the best man win on the killing. This is the funeral right here. It's just no casket yet. He wants to get a body in his record. Nah, I want a body on my record. Mm -hmm. I want one. <laughs> no, you don't. I want one. I want one. I really do. <laughs> it could have beat Mike Tyson. It's no disrespect to Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. And his era was the best in his era, but this is a new era. See, some of the fans can't even name Mike Tyson's last five opponents or who he even fought to get to the belt. It's just that modern day hearsay old Mike Tyson thing, you know what I'm saying? Dante, stop kidding the people, stop screaming and shouting. Let's just get the fight made, that's it, you know, I don't care about all this talk, this idea. Now what actually happened in the last two and a half years? Why has Dillian White not get his shot at the WBC world title yet, despite the fact that White has been the WBC's number one contender for over 900 days. I'm number one, baby! Let's go! Let's go! That's it! After his loss to AJ, Dillian White bounced back in 2016 and decided to take the WBC route with the hopes of facing then champion Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder. By beating the Nordic nightmare Robert Helenius on October 28, 2017, Dillian White captured the WBC Silver Heavyweight title and more importantly became the number one contender with the WBC. One week later, Wilder, who then held the WBC Heavyweight title for close to two years, faced his first mandatory challenger as a champion in Bermain Stavern who only had one fight in between his first fight with Wilder and was inactive for the majority of a year and a half since losing his WBC title to the Bronze Bomber in January 2015. After knocking out Stavern in one round, Wilder sent some shots to Dillian White in the post-fight interview. They trying to give me a peasant as in Dillian White. Dillian White is a small town boy, you know, he's using words that he doesn't know the meaning of like, what American guy have you ever heard use the word peasant? The thing about it, a king don't chase a peasant. Wilder claimed he wanted to fight Anthony Joshua and blamed the fight from not happening, partly because Joshua's promoter, Eddie Hearn, wanted to match Wilder with Dillian White first, according to Wilder himself. They trying to give me a peasant as in Dillian White, but they don't want to put Joshua on their contract. Why should I go to England to fight a peasant when, without the king on the contract? I want Joshua. <laughs> now, as of May 2020, the Wilder Joshua fight hasn't happened yet, neither has the Wilder vs. White fight. Most critics will put the blame on Dillian White, as even Deontay Wilder himself has done on numerous occasions. I mean, Dillian White is only waiting because he wants to wait. You know, Dillian White is one of those characters that he wants to call out the best fighters, but he don't want to fight the best fighters. The Wilder camp and Wilder fanatics like to bring up the Luis Ortiz title eliminator as a point for White not getting his shot at Wilder. And that's partly true because Dillian White did decline the Ortiz fight as a final WBC title eliminator. If Deontay Wilder signs a contract with me saying I beat Luis Ortiz, he fight me next and fight no one next, I fight Luis Ortiz next. The simple as that. Bronze Bomber, let's go. Let's go. You keep coming with excuses and keep trying to get out of the fight. There you go, mate. Sign a contract with me saying if Dillian White fight Luis Ortiz and beat him, I'll fight him next. Let's go. Duck squad. However, what most of these critics fail to mention is that White had already been the number one contender for a year and a half, already won a title eliminator against Derek Chisora back in 2016, yet the WBC wanted White to jump through another hoop in Luis Ortiz. More proof as to why the WBC are part of the reason why Wilder vs. White hasn't happened as of yet. December 1st, 2018, Deontay Wilder gets to keep his WBC heavyweight belt by fighting Tyson Fury to a split decision draw. 
most people have Fury winning the Wilder vs. Fury 1 fight and an immediate rematch beckons. February 2019, the WBC orders Dillian White to fight Dominic Brazil for a final title eliminator. Tyson Fury, who just signed a lucrative five-fight deal with ESPN, decides to move in another direction and in a surprising turn of events, forfeits the immediate Wilder rematch. March 6, 2019, the WBC makes Dominic Brazil Wilder's mandatory challenger. Despite the fact White vs. Brazil had already been ordered as the final title eliminator, despite the fact that Dominic Brazil had not been in a final title eliminator himself, despite the fact that up until that time, Dillian White had been the number one contender with the WBC for almost 500 days. Now, in defense of Wilder, a lot of his fanatics accused Dillian White for his use of PEDs. It's been reported that they had more than one substance in their body. In fact, they didn't, it was reported that they didn't notify the WBC nor Oscar Rivas camp that they that Dylan White was on it. It was reported that they knew three days prior to the fight that he had that in his system and they continued to let him fight. Here Deontay Wilder refers to White's alleged uses of the anabolic steroid Dianabol in preparation for his July 2019 fight with undefeated hard-hitting Oscar Rivas who was a legit top five contender in the WBC rankings. Man this guy has been crying talking about 600 days he ain't been the mandatory and he finally get the opportunity when he had four opportunities before, but he got official opportunity this time to do it. And what did he do? Shame on you. Shame on you. And yes, a 24-year-old Dillian White tested positive for taking a banned substance after his victory over Hungary's Sandor Baloch, for which White served a two-year ban back in 2012. Since then, Dillian White has not been caught with any illegal substance as of today's episode. Now, unfortunately, a lot of white detractors do not know the proper facts of White's history, including Deontay Wilder himself. When his B test come back positive, because most times the A when the A positive, the B almost come come back positive. Yes, then they're gonna be in the biggest um, lawsuit of their lives. I don't know if that's real. UK anti-doping, otherwise known as UCAD, has withdrawn an anti-doping rule violation charge it laid against Dillian White earlier this year. Mr. White provided several other doping control samples to UCAD and VADA between 20 June and 20 July 2019, i.e. the date of his fight with Oscar Rivas, all of which also tested negative, and they are not suggestive of doping. UCAD has accepted the explanation provided by Mr. White, and in accordance with the UK anti-doping rules, the charge against Mr. White has been withdrawn. It took over four months before Dillian White got cleared and his doping allegations were dropped. In fact, the UK Anti-Doping or UCAT's official statement came out just days before his December 7 fight against Marius Wag on the Ruiz vs. Joshua 2 undercard in Deria, Saudi Arabia. In the meantime, Deontay Wilder had KO'd Brazil in one round and faced Luis Ortiz for a second time, a fight no one asked for. What we do know is Wilder's position when it comes to drug cheats in the sport of boxing. All these guys taking all these drugs just to advance, just to 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 get a, 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 a advance in their careers because they took coward to do it by themselves. They need help, and it's sad. It's sickening. They need to be banned. You know, you know, six years, eight years. They need to get something, especially second time. The more you do it, the higher it go. And then when you do it three times. You ban for life. Ironically, Luis Ortiz, who had failed multiple drug tests in recent years, he's now been busted twice, as Molly mentioned, for PEDs. And I keep telling these fighters, if you're gonna take something and put something in your system, we gonna know. I got eyes and ears everywhere. I got friends all over the world, man. I had a, a stress breakdown due to that situation. He messed it up. I think he didn't end his career. He didn't, he didn't messed up his career. Yet still, Luis Ortiz has gotten two title shots against Deontay Wilder, and these were both voluntary title defenses. I'm still gonna bless him with the opportunity because I feel he's the best, and I say I'm the best, I know I'm the best, and I wanna prove to the world that I am the best ever way in the world. I wanted to bless him again because I, I was looking and I see these guys don't want to fight him, period. And I also want to bless him as well too. You know, a lot of these top guys is not blessing him. They'll say he old, 
but they won't get in there and fight the old man. And I'm blessing them again with the opportunity to be on pay-per-view. All these guys taking all these drugs is sickening. He's now been busted twice, as Molly mentioned, for PEDs. Yes, they need to get something, especially the second time. The more you do it, the higher it go. And then when you do it three times, you ban for Really, life. nigga? So let me get this straight. Wilder condemns boxers who fail a drug test, then goes on to face Luis Ortiz twice because he wants to quote unquote bless him, seemingly overlooking the fact Ortiz failed two drug tests inside the span of three years, which was widely reported on not too long ago. Then on the other hand, Dillian White, who hasn't been caught with any illegal substance since 2012, has been cleared from his latest doping allegations who has been the WBC number one contender for over 900 days, reinstated as the WBC interim titleist and WBC mandatory challenger, is still waiting for his first world title shot and still hasn't faced Deontay Wilder as of today. I've said it many, many times, uh, you know, I give all fighters the opportunity and chance to, to, to come and fight me. And with Dylan, he had multiples of time, you know. See, that is a straight contradiction. Deontay Wilder being disingenuous. Now if Wilder really wants to prove he's the best, he's in luck because the body snatcher expressed his desire to fight the bronze bomber even after his recent loss to Tyson Fury. Listen, I'll fight Deontay Wilder tomorrow whether he's got a belt or not. I just want to fight him to beat him up. The question, does Deontay Wilder really want to get in the ring with Dillian White? In today's episode, you've seen how the WBC has given Wilder leeway to avoid Dillian White when Wilder was champion. Not saying he was scared or is scared of White per se, but Deontay Wilder definitely ducked Dillian White. And the body snatcher holds the receipts for the world to see. And then he, and he also said to me, private message, oh, I'm gonna make you wait two years. I'm like, why are you getting paid career high money? Wilder no, text no. you that? Yeah, I can show you the text. Wow, wow. Like, I can show you the text. Show, you might have to show, show it. Us. From show us. You might, you're going to have to show We're going to have to show our fans in the zone this oh. text from Wilder. <laughs> yeah, we'll give them some time. There you go. Tell your promoters to give, to yeah. give me what I want. Get it on easy. Because honestly, I don't have to do anything for at least two years. Because honestly, I don't have to do anything for at least two years. Honestly, I don't have to do anything for at least two years. Get out. Oh, oh wow. He's been a coward for a long time. He's been running and ducking and diving, dodging because he knows I'll give him that work. He knows when the can man come, I come to open shit up. Mm -hmm. Coming up in part three of the villain's version, more context to the body snatcher's body of work inside the ring. And why at this point in time, Dillian White certainly makes a case for being one of the best heavyweights of the current era. A little bit later there, they come around. That is a dramatic knockdown. Facts, fairness, and proper context. What are your thoughts? Drop them below in the comment section and let's have a conversation. Feel free to like and share. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell if you enjoy the content. This is Boxing Subjective Observer with Ringside Stories. Thanks for watching and have a legendary day.